Hey everyone, Adam here again. Uh, welcome back to uh, the Sim Hub tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, one of my favorite features that we can build in Sim Hub, and that is pop up alerts. So if you have a um, pit limiter on, or you're in a multi class race, and an LMP2 driver is barreling down upon you, and you've got that blue flag, you're going to be able to see that on your dash with what we're going to create today. Now, if you're like me and you use Crew Chief, you're very familiar with Jim and how he will also give you that information, blue or yellow flags, um, a couple other things. But sometimes in the heat of the moment, you don't always hear Jim. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some notifications that will pop up on our dashboard or display so that we can be notified visually rather than by audio cues to see that, hey, there's a yellow flag up ahead. We should maybe pay just a little more attention than we already are. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so here is the dashboard that we started in the last video. Uh, right now, it's very basic, very plain. You can see here in the folder, uh, this is our center dash. These are all of the items within our center dashboard. Now, the first thing I wanna do, I like to have a pit limiter notification. It can be anything. You can go and import an image uh, that you want to have pop up. You can create a text box. But the key here is we don't want this notification on our dashboard at all times. We only want it on the dashboard when the pit limiter is activated. So let's go ahead first and let's create what that alert is going to look like for us. So I want to have a nice little rectangle that's going to go across across the top of my dashboard here. And we want to fill the background of this dashboard with something that is going to be bright. It's gonna catch at least my eye. Um, and we're gonna make it, uh, no, I don't like that one. Let's go, there we go, fire brick. It's a little bit lighter. But now what we wanna do, okay, fine, we can see that. Let's change. The border for this one, we don't want a border, we just want a solid red rectangle here all the way across the top of our dashboard. And now we want to add a text box to this. We're going to change our text box to say pit limiter on. Now, obviously, this font is a little too big to fit in there, so we're going to bring this down and we're going to make it 16. Will that fit? That'll fit nicely. Now, since the red box alert flag, whatever we're going to call it, uh, spans the whole width of the dashboard, we're just going to center our text box for pit limiter horizontally. Now, I mentioned previously about layers, which are items that are grouped into the folder here or groups. The difference between the two is with a layer, I can come in here and I can select everything in this layer folder, but I can't move it all at once unless I select everything at once individually. So for this pit alert, we're going to group these two. So we're going to highlight both of them in the right hand menu. And then on our keyboard, we're going to hit control G. Now we've created a new layer and we've grouped it. You can see the chain link there to identify this is a group. We're going to call this our pit limiter group. You can see that we have both of our items now. When we highlight pit limiter, we can grab everything and move it all, keep relative to each other. And we don't have to worry about if we move the alert box down here, the text is going to move with it, stay in the same position that it is. But I want to keep it up at the top. Let's move it back up here. There we go. Okay, so now our pit limiter is on. But we don't want this on at all times. Not, this is not going to be cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight our group. Now we're going to come down here to the general section and to the visibility tab. This is the key to creating pop-up alerts. So for our visibility tab, we're going to click this gray function box. Now right now you can see this little tool tip that pops up that says there is no binding assigned to this group. So we're going to click function. We are going to go with computed value. Now this is where we're going to enter in the value uh, to look to see if our pit limiter is activated or not. 
Well, that's a good question. How do we know what that value is? So let's go back to the main Sim Hub window. We're going to go to Available Properties, and you're going to have this cool little search box. I've mentioned this in a previous video, so we're just going to start typing pit. And we see a few things. Let's uh, make break that down a little more. Pit limiter on. Beautiful. There it is right there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to right click. We're going to copy the name. We're going to come back here. We're going to place this into brackets because that is what is required. So now this is telling the function here to look at the pit limiter, but all it's doing right now is it's looking at the pit limiter. It's and that's it. Is there a pit limiter? Okay, fine. Yeah, one is there, but it doesn't know if it's on or off. Most flags or alerts like pit limiters, yellow flags, checkered flags, it's a binary zero or one in the data stream. If you go back over to this, you can see right here, because I don't have the sim loaded and my pit limiter is not on, it's zero. So this is telling me that the pit limiter is off. If the sim was loaded, I was in the session and it was turned on, I would see a one here for the raw value. So we're going to go back to here and we just simply want to say pit limiter greater than zero. So it's going to look to see is the pit limiter on value greater than zero, meaning is it one? So if the value is one, if I've turned on the pit limiter, we'll hit OK. It will now display when the pit limiter is activated. But now you're probably asking, well, wait a second, we just did that. Why is it still there? So now what we need to do is we just come over here, click toggle visibility. That turns it off when the pit limiter is off. Now, if we were to load into the sim, we could activate the pit limiter. We would see that pop up. Unfortunately, iRacing is giving me some issues right now, so I'm not going to be able to show you that tonight in this video. All right, so we got our pit limiter. Uh, what could be next? Yellow flag alerts. These are huge, especially now that we have Long Beach and iRacing and crashes happen all the time in the hairpin. You might not hear Jim say something, so you want your screen to flash a big, bright yellow alert. So we're going to create another rectangle. And I like my rectangles, my yellow flags to span the whole screen. I want to know. And because this is just going to be a one box, there's not going to be any text in here whatsoever. We're just going to call this yellow flag. And then we're going to change the background color to yellow. But, ooh, okay, well, wait a second. That, uh, that kind of like fills the whole screen. We can't see the dashboard. So we're going to change the opacity and we're going to make it so that it doesn't completely blind us. And I think about 50%, maybe a little more. Let's go 60. So I can still see the text that is behind the yellow flag, but I also know that now my dashboard is completely yellow. I need to be more cautious. So now for this, we're going to go back up. We're going to click on it. Visibility again right here. Computed value. Ooh, I don't know what that one is off the top of my head. So we'll go back to here. Available properties. And we're going to search for flag. Right here. Game data. Flag. Black. Blue. Checkered. Green. White. Yellow. Copy the name. Come back over to here. Add our brackets. Paste it in there. Now again, this is a binary, is it yes, is it no function. So we're just going to say greater than zero, which means if there's no yellow flag, we don't see it. If there is a yellow flag, we do. We'll click OK, and again, we will check this. Now that's one way to do this. But let's say we want to have some other flags, and we don't want to constantly um, do that. What we can do is we can then create additional functions to expand upon that so that we can then come into here and we can then add an if statement. So it can say if flag yellow, if flag black, if flag blue, like we can group all of this and we can create one really cool, but that gets big and it gets complex. I prefer to keep it simple. Let's just add a yellow flag this way. If somebody happens to want to download one of my dashboards that I create and they like the yellow flag, but they don't want the blue flag, they can just simply delete the blue flag and keep everything there. Now, the last alert that I like to have is for in-car 
changes that we can make during a race. And for me, that is the brake bias. I change the brake bias throughout a 45 minute IMSA race more than once, but I want to be able to see full screen what I'm changing it to. Now I could have down here in my dashboard, a little brake bias indicator to show me the current value. But when I'm changing it by pushing a button on a steering wheel, I don't want to be looking down at that value. I need to be able to see it just off of my peripheral vision. So we're going to create another rectangle. Make this one full screen again. We're going to get rid of the border. Okay, so now we have that. We're going to make the background color, I don't know, brakes are generally stop red. Oh, no, 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 that's too much. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to make this black. And we are going to keep it 100% for the opacity so that it covers the whole screen. So now we're going to add a text value. And for that text value, we are going to come over here. And we are going to make this our break bias text. But we don't know what it is. So we're just going to say 55 for right now. Now what we need to do is we need to apply a function to this. Because right now, if I just hit enter, this is always going to display 55 no matter what happens. The other thing I want to do is I want to center this text here in the window horizontally. Oh, shoot. I did that wrong. We just want to center the box. Center, center. We're going to make this box solid. Uh, let's say 75 by 75. Now we'll center it. Then we're going to add another text box below it to say break bias to indicate that we have made a break bias change. Now this is a little rudimentary, I admit, but it will work. Oh, I didn't even type that properly. There we go. Now we can read it. Okay, so what we need to do though is we need to apply a function to this value. So what we want to do is we want to go back to here and we want to search for break bias. So the data core plugin, game data, we're going to copy this. We're going to go back to here. So now this is going to display 55 when you're in the editor, but once you're in a, in a session and you're in a car and there is an actual break bias value, we're going to click this function, computed value, add our brackets, and then break bias. So now this is going to override that 55 number that we typed in with the actual break bias value from the vehicle that we're sitting in. But right now, because we haven't applied any formatting to this, it's just going to show us the break bias as a whole number. So in this case, I don't want to do that. I want to be able to see if it's 52.4, 52.8. So we're going to add a little formatting here, 0, 0.0. So it's going to give us the result to the first decimal place. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. And we're going to change that here too, just so I can see that. We'll expand this out a little bit widthwise. We'll make it 85. That's still too narrow. Still too narrow. Whoops, I typed that wrong. Make this 95. We will recenter it in the middle of our dashboard. And now what we're going to do, we're going to select all of these. We're going to hit Control G, and this is going to be our break bias alert. All right. So far, so good. We've got a break bias. It sits lower on the screen than I want to, so we're going to change that. So we're going to select these two. We're going to move them up. That's a little better. So now when we change the break bias, it'll be right there on our dashboard, sort of. Right now it's covering everything. So what we need to do is for this group, which means the background and the two text items that we've created, we need to set a little function here so that it only pops up when we change the break bias. We're going to click the visibility function, computed value. Now what we want it to do is 
look at the break bias value. So it's going to be that same thing, but we want to add a little different. And I'm just going to copy this from my notes over here. And now what we're going to do is this right here changed. So what this does is if the break bias value changes at any point in time during a session, it's going to cause the alert to pop up. This right here, I won't go into too much detail, but what this number does is this only causes the pop-up to show when our, when our engine RPM is above a certain speed. So if we're sitting at idle in pit lane and we change the brake bias, the pop-up won't happen. Uh, once we get rolling and we're on track, then we'll see it alert full screen. So we're going to click OK. And once again, we will toggle the visibility. And I'm also going to create a layer for my alerts. We're going to move all of these in here. And I want to make sure that my alerts are in the proper order. So if I've got the pit limiter set, but there's a yellow flag, it will look like this. Now I can reverse it. I can move pit limiter down to here. I don't want that. I want it to look like this. I want the yellow flag to be above the pit limiter, but that's personal preference. So there you have it. Now there's one last thing we, oh, it moved it out of the folder. There we go. Pit limiter, break bias, yellow flag. Okay, cool. Everything's in the right order. Now there's one last step we have to do here. We're going to save our dashboard. Close this window. Go back to Dash Studio. Here's the dashboard. We're going to click More. And then we are going to export the dashboard. Documents. I need a new folder. Sim Hub folder. And we are going to export this dashboard. Now what I'm going to do is down in the description, I'm going to post a link to the Google Drive that you can go ahead and you can download this. You can play with the alerts. You can modify them, copy and paste them into an own dashboard that you're creating. Uh, for some, like the flag, it's very simple because if you can just type in flag, you can see they're all right here. All you need to do is just copy the existing yellow flag alert and change the value in the function. For things like traction control, you can copy the brake bias alert and just modify. Or you can go ahead, I recommend trying to create your own. Uh, that's the way I would learn best, but it's entirely up to you. So hopefully this has, has helped you. Um, if it does, Give the uh, video there a thumbs up so that ultimately we can get more people to see these videos and better understand how to utilize SimHub. Uh, I would appreciate it, and I'm sure others would too. Thank you very much.